we first see at the global level and by region pretty much the Omicron wave unfolding as expected. Uh, there are a handful of places where Omicron waves have not yet started, places like Indonesia or Malaysia or Vietnam or Cambodia. Uh, but in general, we're seeing the wave march across countries as expected. In fact, when we look at the timing from uh, the first big surge in reported cases to the peak in reported cases, we're seeing across countries um, that that runs about 20 to 25 days. And what's interesting, perhaps, is that that time from introduction to peak uh, in very disparate places in Canada and many states in the U.S. and some northern states in Mexico, uh, you know, time to peak in, for example, Argentina, uh, countries like Qatar, uh, countries, a number of countries in southern Europe, most of Eastern and Southern uh, Africa, in some states now in India, that that time to peak is quite consistent and seems to be about the same time, regardless of the background level of immunization, regardless of the background level of previous infection. And so our understanding of that is that uh, Omicron is so transmissible that uh, it's reaching all those people still susceptible, whether because of waning uh, immunity from vaccination, or you've never been infected, or waning immunity from, from infection-derived uh, immunity, that you know it's going through all susceptibles, reaching a peak, and coming down. And that's not something we've seen in previous waves, where uh, because of behavioral change, because of government action, uh, we have not seen all of the susceptibles getting infected in any particular way. So very different uh, for Omicron, and it just speaks to the extraordinary speed um, and transmissibility of, of the Omicron wave. So I think as we look, uh, we're seeing the, the wave unfold as expected, uh, but there are two countries in particular uh, that are worth uh, tracking, and those are you know, two countries with zero COVID strategies, namely China and New Zealand. In New Zealand, there now appears to be uh, community cases. So we're expecting, since uh, the prime minister has said they won't go into lockdown, uh, that there will be a major Omicron wave coming. And likewise, in this week's analysis, we've included all of China. In previous uh, releases, we've only focused on provinces with um, an ongoing transmission. But because we think that uh, lockdowns won't eventually work in China, we've modeled out uh, a major Omicron wave in, in China, which would be peaking, you know, perhaps later in February and into March. So the other aspect in this week's analysis um, is sort of what we see um, coming next in terms of um, the impact on hospitals and death. And Post-Omicron, that's really going to depend both on the advent of uh, new variants and when they will emerge, whether they're more or less severe than Omicron, and of course, the, the new factor that we have not yet built into our models uh, that will have a big effect on, on future uh, waves of transmission, and that is antivirals. And so I think we will be paying more attention in the future to trying to understand the likely scale up of these highly effective antivirals that are now reaching uh, the marketplace. And we'll, uh, even though we don't expect major lockdowns in the future, uh, we'll also make a big difference in reducing future burden uh, as well.